Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. That was the gloomy and autumnal view from my office window earlier this morning. So does it set the theme for the next couple of weeks or not? Well, I'll start again by emphasising that there is quite a lot of uncertainty still in the medium term outlook. Nonetheless, I'm going to begin by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. This sequence begins 18 GMT, Tuesday the 14th of September. At the outset, there are still some outbreaks of heavy rain affecting parts of eastern England, but they clear away fairly quickly. And a ridge of high pressure then builds in from the southwest during the next couple of days. But as we head towards the weekend, Weather fronts once again start pushing in from the Atlantic and in western parts of the UK there could well be some heavy outbreaks of rain around. But if you watch what happens, they fragment as they move eastwards with high pressure building to the northeast. So in central and eastern Britain there may not be a great deal of rain around this weekend. Into the early part of next week, 15 GMT, Monday the 20th of September now. And we can see there's a more active weather front pushing southeastwards across all parts of the UK, according to this computer model run at least. So if this is correct, even parts of the southeast of England can expect some significant rainfall uh, next Monday. And then that rain clears away. We look to the northeast because high pressure is building right across the UK. It's going to be centred over Scandinavia, but it's going to be extending its influence, influence to most of the United Kingdom. There is an indication here of Atlantic disturbances continue to, continuing to bring uh, outbreaks of rain into the northwest at times, but for much of the UK, it's looking like an increasingly dry picture as we head through next week. Just taking a look at the jet stream profile to give some more indications about what's taking place. This is 12 GMT Friday the 17th of September. Jet streams not particularly strong. You can see on, on these charts the blues and yellows are indicating higher wind speeds. So we can see although the jet stream is actually quite far southwards, it's not strong. So there isn't much oomph to push along those weather systems. By the 18th of, uh, by the 19th of September, what we see is there's an increasingly strong jet stream here to west of the UK, and that's possibly going to be pushing the weather front through on Monday and ensuring that it remains more active as it moves through more quickly. By the 22nd of September, though, the high pressure's building and the jet stream's heading uh, northwestwards of the UK indicating an increasingly dry picture where we could have low pressure still centred to the southeast, possibly bringing the risk of showery rain to southeastern parts of Britain. There's quite some uncertainty about exactly how things will develop by that point. Now, in terms of temperatures, they're going to be varying a little bit, largely dependent on the amount of cloud, rain and sunshine. So just a couple of charts to illustrate the ranges. This is for Thursday the 16th of September. See values of 21, 22 Celsius in much of southern and central Britain. So pleasantly warm still where the sun breaks through. It's a little bit cooler further northwards, but still values up there not too bad for the time of the year. Jumping forward to Saturday the 18th, this is when we've got those weather fronts trying to push eastwards, but probably fragmenting as they do so. We can see values there in eastern England, 20, 21 Celsius. It's a little bit cooler there as you head northwards and westwards, also in areas where there could well be cloud and patchy outbreaks of rain, helping to suppress the temperatures. Overnight minimums generally looking quite high. Now we are obviously reaching the time of year where the nights are becoming long. There's a growing chance of ground frost under the right conditions, but generally through the next few days at least, nighttime minimums look set to be quite high, particularly in southern and eastern parts of England. But by Wednesday the 22nd, with that high pressure building in, clearing skies, possible light winds, we could see some lower values, and this is for uh, showing minimums on Wednesday, the 22nd of September. You can see sixes, sevens, eights across much of the country, so down into single figures. I think it's also just worth mentioning that during some of the nights where we've, 
in the shorter term where we've got that ridge of high pressure building in following the wet conditions, there could well be some fog around and that may be quite slow to clear at times during the days. Also, wind speeds are worth taking a quick look at. I think the windiest condition is generally going to be in the northwest of the UK. This is just to illustrate possible values. So, 03 GMT, Friday the 17th of September. You can see just to the northwest of Scotland there, 45, 50 mile an hour gusts being shown. Moving forward to Monday the 20th of September, similar picture there with the windiest conditions up to the northwest. At this stage, Nothing really unusual at all for the time of the year. Obviously, though, it is something to keep an increasing eye on as we head through September and into October. Rainfall. This is the 10-day GFS uh, snapshot. So the GFS model was used to create the animation at the beginning. I think the key points here are, although it's shown significant rain in central and eastern England there, over 30 millimetres in places, most of that is forecast to fall in the very short term. So once the rain clears away through today and tomorrow, it looks like there will be a good deal of dry weather in central and eastern England. But in the northwest, we can see there the, yet the greens and darker blues into Northern Ireland as well, they're all showing that to be the wettest part of the UK through the 10-day period. Just thought it would be worth taking a quick look at the Northern Hemisphere profile because what we're seeing is a, a strong signal for high pressure to be building over Scandinavia. The chart on the left is valid on Monday the 20th of September. I've circled uh, Scandinavia and the UK. The UK is essentially the bottom left of that circle. And the yellows and orange shading on these charts are used to indicate high pressure. So we can see there's, there's a strong build of high pressure likely uh, to the northeast of the UK. And as I said, that's going to be influencing our weather. And the signal is for it to become quite persistent. The chart on the, on the right is for Friday the 24th September. And by then, it really is the dominant feature across much of Europe. So, as I say, it does look as though we've got changeable conditions in the short term, if the GFS model runs correct. But then high pressure begins to build through the second half of the first week. So, do the other deterministic model uh, runs support a similar scenario? I'll begin by uh, just recapping the GFS. This is for Tuesday the 21st of September. High pressure at this point is building up from the southwest. We've got the high pressure to the northeast of the UK over Scandinavia, as I've just been discussing. And later on, these two join together and become the dominant feature, as I said, of the UK's weather. The Canadian model, that's, that's similar to the GFS with the high pressure uh, building from southwest. The European models, I'll begin with the icon, these very, very, they are consistent with each other, but they're a little bit different to the North American one, so the Canadian uh, model and the GFS. What we see on the icon is that high pressure at this point is having more influence across the south and east of the UK, low pressure there to the northwest. So the orientation of that high pressure is a little bit different to what the GFS was showing. The European ACM model, also similar with low pressure to the southeast, probably having some influence still at this point, maybe keeping the risk of showers. But essentially, this high pressure is building strongly from the southwest and linking up with that high over Scandinavia. Finally, with the Europeans, here's the UK Met Office run. Again, low pressure to the southeast, high pressure from the southwest and to the northeast, linking together there, setting up potentially a dry pattern in much of the UK greater risk of rain in the northwest, possibly in the southeast to begin with, with showery conditions being a risk. So taking all those deterministic models together, the GFS, which is from the United States and the Canadian, they have the high pressure being orientated slightly differently at the end of the first week uh, to the ECM UK Met Office and ICON, which often do, in my experience and view, tend to 
uh, show very similar solutions to each other. But it can be a little bit different to the North American model runs. I'm not entirely sure whether they share some of the same internal physics or use some of the same data sets. I, I don't really know, but they do often seem to uh, generate solutions closer to each other's than they do to the North American runs. All in all, though, the indication here is for high pressure to become increasingly influential by the end of the first week of the forecast period. So what about the second week of the forecast period? As usual, I'll take a look at the ensemble data to try and identify trends and probabilities rather than specifics. Starting with this 16-day GEFS data table for London and southeastern England, which shows forecast upper air temperatures from all of the runs in the ensemble. The average at this time of year is about 6.5 Celsius, so the question is, are most of the runs falling above that or below it? Well, to begin with, the columns are mostly yellow and orange, runs going for between 6 and 10 Celsius and 11 to 15. Therefore, it's a mostly above average start. But as we go through this period, the greens increase and they reach a maximum of 48%. Greens are runs going for between 1 and 5 Celsius, so below that 30 year norm. So there is something of a cooling trend there. Possibly more runs are bringing in cooler air, but they don't become the majority. And towards the end there, during the last couple of days, the amount of green in the column starts to reduce once again. Therefore, summarizing the second week here, it's, I think, suggesting that upper air temperatures are likely to be close to or above the average for most of the time. If we just jump up to Glasgow to take a look at the pitch from the northwest. Week two starts with mostly yellow in the columns. Those are 6 to 10 Celsius. But further north, the 30-year average is a little bit lower. It's close to 5 Celsius. So most of the runs at the start of week two are showing warmer than the 30-year average. As we head through week two, the amount of green increases appreciably and it reaches 74% there on Sunday the 26th. So I think looking at this it suggests there is a greater chance of it turning cooler relative to the norm at least for some of the time during the second week. Towards the end there the amount of green in the com starts to decrease once more. Nonetheless as I say it looks cooler relative to the average from the London and the southeast plot did. Two meter temperatures, I've not used this particular graphic before. It shows the mean two meter temperature forecast from the GEFS for days 10 to 15. So it was initiated on uh, Tuesday the 14th of September. So day 10 is the 24th and it's running out to the 29th. The brown shading is positive, so warmer than the 1981-2010 uh, average. The blue shading is negative. What we can see here over the UK is blue shading over much of the north, brown shading there in southern and central areas. It's, it's quite difficult to really interpret what's going on here, but it could well be suggesting the increasing chance later on of some rather chilly nights under the area of high pressure, uh, particularly in the northern half of the UK, and that could be what's pulling down the, uh, the, the anomaly, leading to the negative anomaly with maybe higher nighttime temperatures relative to the average in, in the south of the UK. But as I say, it's really quite difficult to say exactly what this is suggesting. Um, but the anomalies are not great, for just one or two Celsius above or below. In terms of rainfall, um, the chart here is for London, and it shows the uh, rain forecasts at a given time from all of the runs in the ensemble. All we can see through week two is that the bright reds along the bottom there are showing runs which are going for no rain at all. You can see the scale on the left-hand side here. But there are, there are a number going for significant rainfall. You can see the dots there 
through the second week, but it's a relatively small number of them. So I think it's all in all, it's quite a dry picture. Taking a look at the comparable uh, scattered chart for Glasgow, here there are more dots appearing higher up, so showing greater amounts of rainfall through the second week. There's also still quite a few there, quite a lot, which are going for small amounts of rain or no rain at all at the given time. So all in all, it's not a particularly wet picture for the time of the year, but it is, it is suggesting a significantly greater chance of rain as you head northwestwards. So perhaps the quite a few of the runs in the ensemble are showing the Atlantic having more influence in the northwest of the UK with weather fronts just brushing past. It's just a possibility. Looking at the pressure anomaly chart for Monday the 27th of September, this really highlights that signal for high pressure to be building to the north and northeast of the UK. You can see up here there's a very strong positive anomaly for such such a long lead time. You don't usually see the anomaly so great so far ahead. Um, there's a negative anomaly down to the southwest, so perhaps low pressure somewhere over here, or not really correct to say that, lower pressure than normal to the southwest because we'd often have the Azores high here, so perhaps just weaker than usual at this time with high pressure predominantly centred to the northeast. In terms of the mean MSLP, mean surface level pressure from the ensemble, um, I'm using the ECM, uh, sorry, the GEFS chart here for Friday, September the 24th. What you can see is the 1,015 millibar line cuts through the southwest of England, up through central areas and into northern England. So high pressure here, probably having quite a lot of influence, but there is some uncertainty with the influence of low pressure over Iceland to the northwest, as I say, that could well be why quite a few of the GEFS runs are going for wetter conditions in, in the Glas on the Glasgow scatter chart. The comparable plot from the European ECM ensemble has the 1015 millibar line going further north, significantly further north there, just brushing parts of Ireland and then across northern Scotland. It's suggesting, taken at face value at least, that high pressure is going to be more dominant than the uh, GEFS was pointing towards. So to summarise, week one, early rain clears away eastwards to leave drier conditions on Wednesday and Thursday, but there could still be some showers around. Through the rest of the period, it's looking changeable, wettest in the north and the west, driest and warmest in the south and the east. Week two, the same general pattern remains in place, but there should be a good deal of dry weather around. Temperatures probably close to the average overall with the warmest conditions in the southeast. However, confidence is low and the positioning of the high pressure block to the northeast of the UK could make big differences to the weather which we experience. If it becomes uh, positioned just slightly further away from us, then Atlantic weather fronts and low pressure areas may become slow moving close to the UK, leading to a much wetter scenario. However, at this stage, that is not considered to be the most likely or the favoured outcome. So perhaps a little bit unsatisfactory again with that low confidence level through the second week in particular. Nonetheless, I hope you found this useful, enjoyed it, and if you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.